What's up, everybody? I hope you're doing well. CHM Carnivores here. I hope you're having a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Now, I thought, what better to do on a day where there's a solar eclipse than talk about sundews? And so today in this video, we're going to talk through everything you need to know for beginners to how to grow and take care of sundews. In my opinion, one of the coolest plants of all time and certainly a contender for the coolest carnivorous plants. I've always been a Nepenthes lover, but as I grow these things, I love them. Now, as you can see, the setup's a little bit uh, wonky right now. Uh, I have this smaller grow tent. I'm working on getting a large one, but this will have to do for the meantime. As per, uh, as per this channel, that's how it goes, right? You guys are growing with me. You're growing. We're seeing this together. We're on a shoestring budget here, uh, $50 a month but uh, we're able to make it work. So without further ado, let me turn the camera around and we'll talk about how to grow sundews, a beginner's guide, everything you need to know to grow these remarkable plants successfully. See you in a minute. So as I said in the introduction, today is gonna be a tutorial, a beginner's guide to growing these plants. And I will tell you that sundews, I mean, everybody that hears carnivorous plants, um, there's a, a stigma involved that they're so difficult to grow but I will tell you as somebody who's been a lifelong lover of plants and has grown plants forever sundews could possibly be some of the easiest plants in general to grow not just carnivorous plants but easiest plants to grow period um, now so there are a few things that you do need to know in order to grow them uh, and the list is actually pretty small First and foremost, you're going to want to use a, uh, a media that is 50-50 uh, peat moss and or perlite. And you want to make sure that the peat moss and the perlite are um, free of any fertilizers. You can get them at any sort of big box store like a Home Depot or a Lowe's. Peat moss you can get extremely cheap. You can get an, an enormous brick of it for uh, just a few dollars and it will last you for absolutely ever. And um, the perlite, same thing, costs you a couple bucks and you will get a lot. So very, very cheap to start this out. Now, it's important with water that you use a distilled or rainwater, you wanna make sure that you keep your nutrients out of the water and or soil. These plants have grown and evolved uh, to get their nitrogen from bugs. And so you don't want any of that in the soil or it will cause them harm. That sounds difficult, super, super easy to do. You can get something that catches rainwater outside and just use that. And what you wanna do is you want your plants, I'm gonna try to pin over here. You want your plants sitting in water. So I have them here sitting in about, depending on the pot height, about a third of the way up the pot. Now, you can go lower than that, or you can go higher than that. Most of them are not picky at all. And that's one of the other cool features about these plants is most sundews are very tolerant of a wide range of conditions. You can have them uh, very wet to almost dry. And uh, the big takeaway is you wanna keep the soil moist if you can. And the way you do that is just keeping them in some water. So I've got these trays here. You can get them at uh, Target or any sort of store, Walmart, and you can get them relatively cheap and then just pot up your plants and just let them hang out uh, in the, in the uh, trays with just a little bit of water. Now let's talk about light. Most sundews, they do require a lot of light. Now I am growing them in this little grow tent for now until I get a larger one. And I am using a Mars Hydro. This one is a hundred watt and it costs $55 on Amazon. Um, you can certainly grow these outside. They do very, very well outside. And so um, the requirements again there are very low. Just the biggest thing is you wanna give them about 16 hours of direct sunlight. Are, so you can either do that with a grow light, you can do that in your home, in a windowsill, or you can certainly just grow them outside. They're not picky about that at all. Now, depending on the sundew, there's a ton of them. So sundews are on every continent except Antarctica. Let me see if I can get it to focus. And um, there are over 200 or just about 200 different species. My phone does not want to focus. There we go. About 200 species out there. Uh, not counting the hybrids. So there is a lot of options out there. Now I'm gonna talk through some of the ones that are great for beginners. And so um, that way you can add those to your collection. So there's everything from winter growing ones that go dormant during the summer. There are uh, spring and summer ones that go dormant during the winter. 
I'm going to go through what are the easiest ones to care for. And in later videos, we'll talk about more of the dormancy requirements. But the biggest thing is I wanted to cover with those uh, top few things about uh, lights, water, and soil. And if it feels like maybe that was too quick and too boiled down, it really wasn't. It's just that simple. These things are so very easy to grow. Give them 50 50 per, uh, peat perlite. You can even do long five. Uh, but long fiber sagna moss that you can also get at Lowe's um, for very cheap if you would like to do that. You want to use distilled or rainwater or reverse osmosis water and then you want to keep them in a tray with water at all times. Um, some of the easier ones that we'll talk about here in just a few minutes can withstand a little bit of a dry period but for the most part you just want to make sure that they have water and they'll do great. All right, so let's move on to the next section and let's talk through some of these beginner plants that are great for anyone to get started. So normally when you hear beginner plant, you think, well, that's a very limited amount of plants. And so the fun is kind of taken away, right? So you, 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 a lot of people think if you want to grow the really fun, cool looking plants, you got to have those expert knowledge. That is not the case with sundew. So now you're looking at a whole forest here of what's called capensis or uh, drosser capensis or the cape sundew. This is probably one of the easiest plants period to grow, but certainly the easiest sundew to grow. Um, these grow all over the place in, uh, in and around Africa. There is, I don't even know how many, two dozen, maybe 30 um, different varieties of the cape sundew. What is really cool about this is you can see they're covered in flower stalks. This will very, very easily become a weed. I've only bought two Cape Sundews uh, in my time, and now I have all of these and much, much more. Um, they do self-seed. They're called, I can't, I don't remember the exact terminology, but it's essentially a perfect flower. Sorry there for the camera. It's a perfect flower. So in other words, it um, has both male and female, and it will self-pollinate. Uh, and so as the flowers open, and they do not open very long, maybe just for an hour or two, depending on the species, they will close up and they will self-pollinate and they will turn these pods and then they will drop their seeds. And uh, I'm gonna pan over here and just show you all that, that is not algae. Those are thousands and thousands of seeds, most of which are the Cape Sundew. So very, very, very easy to grow. You can get these from um, a lot of different places, curious plant, predatory plants, California carnivores, carnivoro, um, Saracenia Northwest. There's a lot of different places where you can get the Cape Sundew and Sundews in general. And so I highly recommend them. Now let's talk about another beginner plant that is super easy to grow and will very quickly become a weed and that is Drosera bonata. Now there are several different forms. There's Multifida extrema, there is um, Y-shaped T form, uh, there is the uh, Marston's dragon, you name it, there's a ton, a ton of them, Evan's head. But the biggest takeaway is that the banana is a great, great plant if you are a beginner. And as you can see, when they're young, they get these forked leaves almost invariably with all of them. And then as they mature, they will start to branch off. And some of them can get up to 36 of these points on a single leaf. And uh, so what you'll see here, you see all these little plantlets? Now these do not self-seed. There's only one type of banana for the most part. And that is the small form that will self-seed like capensis. For the most part, um, they're gonna come out from their roots, but as you can see, they do that prolifically and they will spread. Root cutting is extremely easy with these. Um, and so what you essentially do is sounds just like what I just said, you take out the plant, cut off some of the roots, plant them in the media, which I'll show you in a minute, and then you get uh, more of the plants. Now they're gonna be perfect clones, um, so they won't have any sort of that genetic diversity, but you will get a lot of plants. Now they do flower, and so this one right here is an Evans head, and it's relatively new to the collection, so it's still small, but it will flower, and sometimes they'll produce fertile seeds, but for the most part, they don't. Um, now, these are small, because they are new to the collection, but they will get enormous. Some of them, like the Dicanama giant, can get up to three feet in diameter, so they can get very big, but don't fret, that takes a lot of time. So next up is spatulata. 
spatch a lot of these tiny little rosetted sundews is what they're called um, produce a as you can see a ton a ton a ton of flowers and so they will self seed again and then they will produce they'll drop their seed and then produce a sort of blanket of these little tiny rosetted sundews now um, the biggest and thing to remember with these especially with the ones that flower a lot is you want to keep feeding them so you can feed them as often as once every two weeks or as once a month but they don't necessarily require food it depends on how fast you want them to grow um, but if you do want to feed them there's some options you can use a max c fertilizer um, or you can use fish flakes and so i've got this right here that i use and you want to just make sure that you uh smush up the fish flakes and get them as small as possible because they will um, rot on the leaf if you have too big of a thing and then you just simply sprinkle them on the leaves and what's really cool about the capensis and the bananas is that well they will actually wrap around the leaves now venus flytrap is not the only carnivorous plant that has movement these a lot of these sundews do as well and so the philoformis will also do that they will wrap around their prey it is much slower than a venus flytrap so you don't get that sort of cool little oddity where you see it in real time it can take a couple of hours but they will close around their prey so that is super super cool to see and then they get the nutrients from them and then they open up now these little droplets that you see on here that is a mucilage that they produce and it's supposed to look like dew hence the name and so it tricks bugs to come over there and want to land on there and then once that happens um, they get stuck and then the plant rolls around the uh, insect and it uh, gets their nutrients. So let's talk through a little bit more and let's wrap up this video. So if growing sundews wasn't easy enough and taking seeds from self-seeding plants wasn't easy enough, there's other options too. And you can do what's called root cuttings, which I talked about earlier in the video, but you can also do leaf cuttings and stem flower stem cuttings. And so what I have here is a banana flower stem cuttings and these are brand new so they're not going to have any growth on them just yet but what you do is you take the flower stalk cut it in about one inch segments and then you put it in I recommend these little seed trays so it gives it 100% humidity and then you just want to close that up and as early as little as two to three weeks you will get little plantlets that are growing and now the flower stalk uh, cuttings and the root cuttings will bear larger plants faster than any other uh, option now you can do leaf cuttings and as simple as taking these leaves cutting them off putting on them yet again on another bed of uh, long uh, long fiber sphagnum moss it's hard to say or you can do what's called the water method and you simply put water in a container so it's sort of like these it's acting as a humidity dome and make sure it's sealed and they will grow uh, in that process as well now a lot of these things can give you one flower stalk one root one um, uh, cutting can give you yield you up to 10 or even uh, more than that plants per cutting so it's very very easy to propagate this now I'm gonna pull you down and just show you if I can get it into focus see those tiny 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 little Y things there those are babies that just happened to fall in there and what happened was when I bought one of the bananas a root fell off and you can see that it is growing little babies from that so extremely extremely easy to grow these plants all right, let me turn the camera around and we'll finish up the video. So the biggest takeaway that I wanna leave you with in this video is this is not necessarily the best setup. So they, they um, what I would like, if I had it perfect, I would have more light in there, give them a stronger light. But I could grow these outside just as easily as anything else and they would do just fine. Um, but the key takeaway is these plants are still surviving even though they need more light. I do plan on in the future adding more light to it, but I wanted to touch on the fact that you don't have to have the perfect setup to grow these. And there's a lot of misinformation out there about uh, carnivorous plants in general, but around sundews about them being difficult to grow. And these plants, I will tell you from experience, are the closest things to weeds that you can get in the carnivorous plant world, maybe next to a utricularia. So extremely, extremely easy to grow. I'm gonna to continue to make videos on these uh, plants along with other carnivorous plants for you to enjoy and hopefully learn along the way with me. And we'll see how this sort of grows together. And I'm planning on growing them outside as well so we can, um, we can visit that in the future as well. Overall, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that this has brought you some sort of knowledge of these wonderful, wonderful plants. 
In the meantime, if you have any questions about them whatsoever, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm always here as a resource to help you, and we're going to grow these plants together along with our Nepenthes and other carnivorous plants and enjoy them together and learn along the way. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. As always, have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. I'll see you soon.